In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at these current conditions, diving into the upcoming pattern, as well as taking a look at some of that severe weather that is upcoming. It is going to be a little bit quieter. We are taking a look at the current conditions here. I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, as we look towards the longer range, things look a little bit quieter in general. Still no signs of any tropical activity yet. We're waiting over the com coming days to see if we will have anything on the five-day outlook. But at this point, looking much, much quieter uh, than even any of the past five years. I was looking at a chart, I think the past four hurricane seasons, each of them we've had at least one hurricane by this point and more tropical storms than we've had. So we are behind schedule in a very, very good way, obviously, um, compared to the last four or five hurricane seasons. Obviously, you don't want to be even close to a couple of the last few. So uh, we're so far, we're looking a little quieter. Conditions are a little bit more primed for an above average season. So I think things are going to get interesting. It could really go either way at this point. And uh, I'm very, very curious to see what ends up happening, actually, with this one, because uh, obviously, like I said, things have not been super active, but things are lined up to support a very, very active tropical uh, season. So it's, it's just very, very interesting setup. Now we can see there is some precipitation over the four corner states here, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Nevada, and Utah. We also see up through Oregon, California, and Nevada up there, we have some precipitation. Uh, then for kind of just east of the Rockies and the Plains, we have some activity up here. So states like Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Colorado, uh, all of these states, even North Dakota, are probably seeing some of those sporadic showers. Uh, this is just an area where we're having some storminess east of the Rockies. Now for the Great Lakes and upper Midwest, we do have a system moving through, bringing some moderate precipitation at times. We'll zoom into that in just a little bit. And then there's a pocket of storminess here extending from Kansas all the way through Missouri, Illinois. Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, and even into Virginia, we have quite a bit of storminess ongoing at this point. Now, for the Gulf states as well, we have just these tropical thunderstorms ongoing. So you can tell, you can kind of get the, the sense here that we are in a very active pattern right now because I have 90% of the United States circled right now, which is never really a good sign, is it? Uh, but we just have some storminess ongoing for most areas this morning, but a lot of it is minor at this point. Now, we'll zoom into the northwest to start things out. I always kind of start out in this corner of the nation anyway. We see for Montana, we have some lighter showers, maybe the beginning of some isolated thunderstorms there in Montana, again, just east of the Rockies. We'll watch how those develop throughout the day today. They are quite isolated at this point. We can also see some isolated showers here for Oregon, California, and northwestern Nevada there. A very odd area to see a lot of precipitation happening. Not a lot, but any precipitation happening in general. Uh, let's just move a little bit further south to the southwest where we do have quite a bit of activity up here. Uh, again, just these monsoon conditions, mostly north and south of Phoenix at this point. So we see quite a bit down here and quite a bit up here. Uh, and then we see some for New Mexico far south of Albuquerque here. And then for very, very far uh, western Texas here, way further west than Odessa there, we're seeing quite a bit of precipitation out there as well. Now we can see we have kind of an interesting feature here. We have kind of this, this area of thunderstorms diving into the plains. And then we have a lot of showers and thunderstorms ongoing in this area where we have a stationary front of sorts, maybe a little bit of an advancing cold front, but very, very stationary. We have showers, lighter showers here on the western end, some more moderate showers here uh, on the more northern end of things. And then underneath here, uh, we have quite a bit of thunderstorm activity that's been going on overnight in this pocket. So for Kentucky, southern Illinois, southern Indiana, southern Ohio, and even southern Missouri, uh, we've experienced a lot of thunderstorms so far this morning. Uh, and that looks to continue throughout the day today. Uh, in some of these areas in here as well. So we'll be watching for that. We'll see on the upcoming, um, the Storm Prediction Center at the end of the video, we'll see what happens with that. As we take a look at the eastern end of things, it's more showers at this point for this area. There is a couple of thunderstorms in there probably, but looks a little bit more showery than anything to me here on this very, very eastern end of things. Now for the upper Midwest and Great Lakes, we have some showers and thunderstorms ongoing, mostly thunderstorms potentially here in the upper peninsula of Michigan, I would say. And there's just a couple of showers here on the lower peninsula and some sporadic showers happening across some of the upper Midwest as well. 
Now, finally, as we take a look at some of these tropical thunderstorms here, we can see, again, just like every single day, they're kind of threatening to head on shore. So we'll be watching for that. Again, this is what usually causes Florida to have thunderstorms nearly daily. So this is kind of the look at this point. We have plenty of those little dots all over the screen. That is your little isolated thunderstorms. And all of these deeper south areas in here will potentially receive some of these throughout the day today. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the upcoming pattern as well as some of the upcoming severe weather a little bit later on. All right, now we are taking a look at the upcoming conditions. As we approach this afternoon, we can see there is actually quite a bit going on here for the Ohio Valley and eastern United States here as this precipitation that's in here kind of spreads uh, to a few different regions here east and north of where it is currently at. And we can see that there is just some low pressure up here uh, to the north. And this is causing a lot of interesting conditions underneath here. Kind of a cold front developing like a secondary cold front. Because we already had one come through. But it looks like there's another one sort of spreading through here. And this is just going to create some interesting situations later on this week. We do see some monsoon activity. And even uh, near the Gulf of Mexico there, still some of that activity going on as well. Now for Thursday, it's evident we have a cold front. I don't know what I just drew there. A five or something. But... We see a cold front developing here, uh, and we see it kind of spreading southward here, bringing cooler air behind it. Obviously, we'll take a look at the temperature pattern in just a little bit, uh, but some storminess can be expected out ahead of this for sure. Uh, some pretty decent thunderstorms, I would say, uh, is probably what's on the way with this. We do see some of this gulf activity still ongoing, still some of this monsoon activity still ongoing, but nothing too crazy from what we've seen. Uh, Friday, low way up here in Canada, we can see... Obviously, where this cold front is, there's no hiding where that is. I probably don't even have to draw it for you guys. But we do see a lot of cold air pouring in. Cooler air, not cold. Cooler air than what we've been seeing. Uh, probably some warm air racing up ahead of the cold front. Um, but ultimately, it is going to come through. We see the monsoon. Uh, it's interesting how this, we have the low up here. The monsoon over here. And then a cold front stretching from uh, both to each other. It's pretty interesting. So there's no escaping the precipitation, basically. There is no holes here in this cold front. Very, very interesting stuff here. It's going to become stationary at a certain point, probably between Saturday and Sunday time frame. Probably Saturday here, it appears. What we'll see is this, this front is kind of just chilling out here now at this point. It's just hanging out. And there's equal amounts of warm air pushing from the south as there is cold air pushing from the north. And that just causes it to basically... Freeze. And what we'll see is some areas there's more warm than cold, some areas there's more cold than warmth. That's why we get a little bit of this curvature in it at this point in the, in the process of this whole thing. Uh, but we can see by Sunday, it's kind of just the precipitation is just heading eastward along it. Again, I explained yesterday, it's like moving your hands together in a pool. The water is forced outward. So we see when there's equal squeeze coming from the south and the north, the precipitation doesn't just stop, it starts heading along that frontal boundary because it's squeezed out by that, you know, the pressing of the two air masses here in between. So that forces it to move along it. Usually that's going to come from west to east, just like most weather systems move from west to east. Now by Monday, it's evident this is heading further northward. So we've seen this advance further and further northward here. Again, still pretty stationary. That's going to be Monday, the 1st of August. And then by uh, Tuesday, the 2nd of August, we see hardly anything left over from that front. We do see a little bit of activity here in the Gulf, perhaps. Let's see. Perhaps some sort of now. I was going to say perhaps it's some sort of tropical development potentially trying to take place, but it's a very quick little spark there of precipitation. We see how west activity kind of, starts to return by Tuesday. Uh, we'll have to see if this continues. We do have a 998 millibar low pressure center here, relatively dry low pressure center, uh, but we do see precipitation around it, obviously to the west of it mostly. Sometimes out west we see that for some reason. Wednesday, we see a low here, 999 millibar low pressure center up there in the upper Midwest. We do see some precipitation, mostly for Canada here, just to the east of that. We have a little bit of precipitation here along the eastern seaboard. And still for the Rockies and Four Corner states, we still see some activity down here. Now let's keep going with this. By the time we reach Thursday the 4th, we start to get a lot quieter outside of the monsoon here. I mean, nothing major to speak of on Thursday the 4th. Friday the 5th here, we see a little bit of activity here along this range, I would say. But still, not a whole lot. We have our next low moving through. 
if this 996 millibar low pressure center here dives down, goes southward like they have been, we can expect another cold front to develop with that low probably. So that would be our next thing that we're looking forward towards. But this is by Friday, August 5th. So that would be a cold front we'd be talking about for maybe the 7th, 8th, 9th time frame of August. So that's pretty far out. Take that with a grain of salt for sure. Now as far as total precipitation through the next 10 days, no surprise here whatsoever that we see a ton where that cold front stalls out. Now, if you're anywhere in the whites here, you're looking at practically no precipitation. Your grays will be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be about a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Your reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns will be five to ten inches of precipitation. We see some of that for Kansas, Missouri, Kentucky, West Virginia in there where that cold front stalls out, becomes stationary, and eventually becomes a warm front. Uh, but it stays stationary so long that we're going to see a lot of precipitation fall for a lot of folks. Unfortunately, we've already seen a lot of flooding up there in St. Louis. Yesterday morning, we actually saw some of that happening. I had no idea that it would be as bad as it ended up being, but obviously uh, it ended up being extremely bad actually for areas near uh, St. Louis and, and just surrounding regions as well. Uh, but mainly I was hearing about St. Louis, the flooding there, but maybe it was a lot of other regions too, unfortunately. Uh, but this is not what you want to see. A lot of precipitation nearby. It is south of St. Louis here from what I'm seeing, but uh, at this point, a lot of precipitation nearby where that flooding happened is not exactly what we need over the next 10 days, but it is what this model is predicting, unfortunately. Now, what we're going to do is move on, take a look at that upcoming temperature pattern, and eventually the upcoming severe weather pattern. Now, here's a day one temperature outlook. We can see where there's a lot of cooler air where that cold front has come through. We also see where the monsoon is happening as well. Let's just move this on a day, um, and this is going to be for Thursday the 28th. We see further below normal temperatures heading in with that cold front. So we have warm air underneath, but this is going to come to an end eventually. And we see a lot of warm air here in the West. It's going to pretty much spread. Now by day two, we see that spreading. So that's already taken place, uh, but a lot of cooler air moving in uh, here for uh, Friday the 29th here. Now for Saturday the 30th, we see that this has moved eastward. So we see a lot of the mid-Atlantic starting to get some of this, even the northeast, except for the very coastal regions where we're seeing a little bit of warmth still. Now for Sunday the 31st, we see it's mostly around here, and this is when it's going to start to get squeezed. We see warm air over top, warm air on the bottom, and this cold air all of a sudden doesn't have a source. Okay, So there's nothing that this cold air is coming from. It's just hanging out in between, and it is going to totally get squeezed from both the south and the north, and that's gonna cause it to completely dissipate. So we'll see this cold air just come to an end pretty fast. Now, Monday, August 1st, we see a lot more warmth spreading around the entire nation almost. Tuesday, August 2nd, we see there's just the tiniest little bit of this cold left over, but overall, the eastern two thirds of the nation is far above normal, and then the west now all of a sudden has turned below normal. This is called a negative PNA, and this encourages warm air to spread through the eastern United States as this cold air is moving down through the western United States. And sure enough, that is what we're seeing right here. Now for, let's see, Wednesday, August 3rd, we see a lot of the same. This negative PNA is even intensifying. We see the warm air spreading throughout the eastern two-thirds of the nation. Now, Thursday, August 4th, we see that the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes especially is dealing with a lot of this above normal temperatures, maybe even a heat wave here. Unfortunately for you guys, it looks like uh, negative PNA, classic negative PNA, all the way down, look, all the way down through Mexico and all the way northward, way through probably even Alaska. This is a strongly anchored uh, negative PNA. And then here is uh, kind of the end of the model run here, Thursday, August 4th, um, where we see still a lot of this cooler air. There's some warmth trying to infiltrate, but still just a lot of cold here for the western coast of North America. We can see that there is a lot of heat now that it's transferred for the Great Lakes in through. Um, this is actually August 5th, by the way. Sorry, I misread that, I guess, or it like changed somehow. But it's Friday, August 5th. I just noticed that. Now, this heat wave kind of continues for the Great Lakes, but it spreads in through the Northeast. So we'll have to watch that. That is in the longer range, but we'll see if that ends up happening or not. But take it with a grain of salt, but be prepared that that might be happening in the longer range. Now, what we're going to do is move on, take a look at the Storm Prediction Center. Now here's the day one categorical outlook. We actually have three general thunderstorm risks here ongoing. Oregon and California there, even northern Montana. And then we have that very large one for probably more than 50% of the United States. 
and that is where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory. For the darker green regions there, uh, one for the plains, and then one there for kind of like the south and mid-Atlantic, in through a little bit of the southern Ohio Valley is what I'd probably call it. That is our marginal risk areas, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur today on Wednesday, July 27th. And then we have one yellow region there, as you can see, for Nebraska, Colorado, and Kansas. And that's where we have a slight risk, and we expect scattered severe weather in there. Now for day two here, it's going to be for Thursday, July 28th. We have two general thunderstorm risk areas, one for Washington, and then again, one for the majority of the United States. That's again where we expect general thunderstorms, but continue to heat every watch, warning, and advisory. Anything is really possible in there. And then we have our two darker green regions, one for the southern Ohio Valley again, and then one for the northeast there. And that is where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then for day three here, which will be Friday, July 29th, we have one general thunderstorm risk area in the lighter green where we expect ice, or better yet, where we expect general thunderstorms to occur. But again, remember to heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We've seen severe weather in these before. It doesn't mean it's impossible by, by any means. Now, the darker green region is where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. That's called our marginal risk area. Again, this was for Friday, July 29th. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, I mean, we're really still out of four out of six. I don't even know if I should stop mentioning it or if I can if I should continue to mention it. I don't know, but uh, it, it just really has been the same thing. We haven't had any tropical activity. Um, it's been quieter, for sure, than years past. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lola the Pan, Mandy Bird, Phil Patrick, Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Mahu Kudalasa, Capite, Charles Tennant, Bill Dallas, Gary's, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Capite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.